What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakey, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakey podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and take a ride with your boy. You know I got another banger for y'all, man. Now, I don't know. Shout out, first off, Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark, picking up their first dub last night over the L.A. Sparks. We know she hit that clutch three, but Aaliyah Boston and Kelsey Mitchell were hooping as well. Um... But Caitlin Clark has been the story, the biggest story in WNBA and women's hoops, period, for the last, like, year, it feels like. And people are on both sides of the fence debating, man. It's splitting some lines. It's drawing some uh, just some outrage. It's drawing some praise. It's, uh, people are all over the place right now, man. But recently, Chicago Sky rookies, Angel Reese... And Camilla Cardoso took some shots at Clark. Before we get into all that, though, make sure y'all hit the subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. And join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. The WNBA has been experiencing growth for the last several years, but it has definitely been expedited with the addition of this 2024 class and the face of it, Caitlin Clark, right now. We got to give her flowers. This is not to throw shade at anybody or tell anybody how to feel. We've heard from both sides of the spectrum, man. I mean, this is the hottest topic maybe in hoops right now, period, other than the NBA Finals. I'm about to tell y'all I haven't heard before, so I doubt you have either. Before the 2023 season, the WNBA had grown by 40% viewership from 2022 to 2023. But with Caitlin Clark's arrival, it's grown by 400% viewership. What that means is if the WNBA were to continue to grow at the rate it grew from 22 to 23, it would take until 2028 to do what Caitlin Clark did this year. Okay, now let's not talk viewership. Let's talk ticket sales. Bear with me. Ticket sales grew in 2023 by 16% from 2022. Ticket sales have grown by 93% in 2024. What that means is without Caitlin Clark, the WNBA would have taken until 2029 or 2030 to get to where Caitlin Clark has gotten them today. Okay, we've we've talked ticket sales and we've talked viewership. Now let's talk about regular season viewership, not draft viewership. Regular season viewership, it grew by 20% in 2023. It's grown by 180% now, which means it would take another five or six years to do what Caitlin Clark has done. So between draft day viewership, which is up 400% to 40%, between ticket sales, which is up 93% to 16%, between regular game viewership, which is up 180% to 20%, what Caitlin Clark has done is grown the WNBA exponentially. She did in five weeks what would have taken five years. Mm. And as it pertains to draft viewership, she did in five days what would have taken five years. So yes, the WNBA was growing before Caitlin Clark. Make that abundantly clear. Mm. But it was growing incrementally compared to the exponential growth. On the other side, Elle Duncan, uh, very popular with ESPN, does a lot of women's basketball broadcasts, play-by-play. I'm sure if you are a women's hoops fan, you have seen her, you know her, had some very strong words as well about Caitlin Clark and the rest of the league. This is only women that get this. I'm tired of it. Like, here's my thing, you guys. What else? Who? Who are these girls? Who are these girls that are hating on Caitlin Clark? Are you just combing through Twitter? What else are these women supposed to do? Fawn over her? Fangirl over her? Bend the f***ing knee? Kiss the ring? Like, what do you want from them? We cannot every time the girl plays a game. She's got 40 games, guys. She's got 35 more games. <laughs> We are not every single game going to revisit and retread this same tired ass rhetoric that all these girls are hating on her and they need to be thankful. They have been. They've said it time and time and time again. You want the girl every single time she walks out onto the court? What are we supposed to do? You want them all to give give Caitlyn their firstborn? Like, what are you looking for? It is embarrassing because if this was the men and you just watched a bunch of other dudes fawn over someone all the time, you'd call them weak. That would be a soft move. Where's your competition? Where's the animus that used to be in the NBA when they really hated each other? Now they're all friends. It's so boring. We hate it. With women, you want them to do what? 
I just got to salute Caitlyn Clark every time because she has just handled this with grace. She's taking everything in stride. She's had some tantrums out there. She's yelled at some refs and teammates. Like, she's gotten some tough love, some hard coaching, definitely. But she's experiencing growing pains like we all expect from rookies coming into the league. Her last three games, though, she's been hooping. Man, a couple 20-point performances. She's getting her assists up, rebounds up, and cutting down on the turnovers. Settling into the physicality of the WNBA game, adjusting to the athleticism, and you know that shot's still gonna be falling. I think, I think, in my opinion, man, in my humble opinion, that she's living up to expectations right now. She's gotten better with every game, and they finally get the monkey off their back and get that first dub. We knew this was going to be a process. Indiana, for the most part, is a young team. They're filling in. Um, trying to build chemistry, man. They've gotten a lot of new faces on that squad. And then they battle injuries as well to some of their key players. So they're they're coming along. You know, we're seeing Boston and Clark build that one-two punch, that dynamic pick and roll with her versatility that we thought that we would see. We're seeing it more. Um, I think for me, I like what I'm seeing, guys. I really do. And I, I really believe that this team, and now, I'm not saying they're going to be a playoff contender within the next year or two, but give them a couple years. Give them grace, like Kayla said. Give them grace and give them time to develop. But speaking of developing, man, Angel Reese and the Chicago Scott Teaspoon and those players out there have been looping. They just knocked off the New York Liberty. Angel Reese, multiple double-digit scoring games, just had 15-9. and nine. Uh, Had the big and one on Stewie to seal the deal and close out the game. And she had this to say, man, and it seemed like to me, y'all let me know if I'm reaching now, but it felt like a shot at another rookie in Indiana. Reese said, quote, and that's on getting a win in, in a packed arena, not just because of one player on our charter flight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, y'all let me know, am I reaching? That feels like shots fired right there. Now, we know... That Caitlin Clark has the security um, on steroids out there. You're not getting close to her. They've been, like, shouting, fighting, scrapping, clawing for charter flights for a very long time now. And I think majority of the league is showing Caitlin the respect. But I'm kind of like, what well, Elgin, what do y'all want them to do? Like, literally go up and thank her and shake her hand before the game? I'm just saying. Um, but we do have to acknowledge her impact, man. We heard from Emmanuel Acho, who's definitely uh, broke it down. And they do have charter flights now. Like, things are changing. I'm not saying it's solely because of Caitlin Clark, but things are changing. But another Chicago Sky rookie, Bill Cardoso, who's been out with an injury, should be making her debut against the Fever, potentially, when these two teams match up, man. So it's getting spicy before that matchup. Uh, she also chimed in. Yeah, I just I have one thing to say about this. All of our games is sold out. So it's not because of one person. And goodbye. That was the last thing I'm gonna say about this. When they mention one player, one player, I mean come on now, it's obvious here. They doing everything but tagging Clark. I'm just saying. Um and you know there were some you a lot of rough with feathers when Clark's shoe and Nike deal, her multi-million dollar deal was announced and people felt like the more deserving players should have a signature shoe a la Asia Wilson, but there's obviously no hard feelings there. We love Caitlin Clark. Yes. <laughs> there's <We> no... <laughs> I think she's amazing. I watched every time I possibly could. Uh, and, our, and our league loves her. This has nothing to do... We're just doing our job. We're going to show up <laughs> Who is effort on the other team is on the other team. We don't really care. We're going to show up and do us. And so I think this narrative of like We're everybody We're everybody yeah. hating on Caitlin Clark and say. even the black and white thing, yeah. knock it off. It's not there. It's not there. So shut down the noise. And by the way, what is she, 22? She's a 22 year old woman with a lot of pressure. She's not perfect. She's not perfect. <laughs> She's a rookie in this league. Like, back off. Yeah. She's back off. She's learning and growing just like everyone else. I feel like that's what people don't give her a chance. This is growth. We tell our rookies every single day, this is new. You're coming into a whole nother new world and starting over. So it's 
the questions are only annoying because it's like, she's young, she's a rookie. Y'all keep asking us these questions as if she's a grown ass woman that's been in this league for years. Like, no, she's doing her job, we're doing ours. And at the end of the day, that's how we grow is when we get better and you do things like that. So yeah, I'm just exhausted over the conversation because I know she's exhausted. I can only imagine. So, and yeah. and so far as the <laughs> charters and this and that, I don't care if Kermit the Frog made the change. We've been fighting for this. <laughs> Over your wall. <laughs> we've, we've been pushing. I mean, I've played in this league at 99, and we were traveling the same way. And I'm, like I said, I don't really care who's bringing this or who's bringing the crowds. What I care is that they're there and they're on the eyes and they see how great women's basketball is. That's what I care about. And that's a mic drop. I just don't think we've seen this polarizing of a figure this early, like a rookie coming into the WNBA with this level of attention, this level of draw. Games are getting sold out everywhere. Venues are being moved to bigger venues. We've seen multiple games hit over a million views that didn't even involve Clark. We can't say it's solely Clark, but we do have to give her her flowers, man, because she's definitely impacting the game. And she's been humble through this whole situation, which is the dopest part, man. Y'all know I've had my guy Nick Cousins on, Iowa Insider, and spoke about Clark and how even she declared for the WNBA draft early before Iowa Senior Night, so that wouldn't take away from the team and those other seniors experiencing their senior night, man. So I thought that was dope. But she's always constantly putting the team first, saluting her teammates, saluting the vets that are helping her, Kelsey Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're seeing that, and I love her approach to the game. It's not like um, she hasn't worked for it. She's talented, she worked hard, and she's an exciting player, and people, of course, are going to tune in. She's bringing in a lot of first-time WNBA fans into the game. I know a lot of you have commented on previous videos and said that, you know, Clark is the reason y'all are tuning in, and she made y'all WNBA fans, because there was a lot of question on whether... Her fans from Iowa and that following from women's college basketball would follow her, her into the pros. And I think that that has definitely been answered. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that situation, man. I know that we talked about Angel Reese, Camila Cardoso, and their comments. It's getting spicy, bro. It's getting spicy out here. People are throwing shots. I love the rivalry. They don't deal with this in the men's game, man. Nobody's asking anybody to go up and kiss LeBron's ring before the game. I'm just saying and he's a vet vet. Clark's still in her first year, but she's doing great things for the women game, women's game. Speaking of great things for the women's game, man, we got a, a little snippet, too, from Flaugé Johnson, Rosin Jr. at LSU, man. Going to be, a, I think, with the addition we know in my last video, I mentioned the addition of Simone Augustus' home run hit higher for Kim Mulkey and this LSU staff. I think she's going to be sensational working with these transfers that are coming in. Could she be the one to unlock Jersey Wolfenberger? I'm just saying, man. I think that it'll be exciting to see what Flage spoke on it. You don't know how excited I am. Like, I, for me, I'm like, how do I take my game to the next level? How can I take my game to the next level? And it's like, I, I, I know I'm good enough to be a pro, but it's a lot of work to get there. And just having a pro, a Hall of Famer, in your corner when you need her any time for any question, like workouts, whatever, I feel like it's kind of a cheat code. And so I'm grateful. I'm excited. I'm so happy that I get to be here in this moment. It's like, Simone Augusta, she's the GOAT. Like, she's the best. You think about Kaylin Gilbert, Cheyenne Day Wilson coming in, Miracle Shepherd coming in. Like, these transfers are going to impact this LSU lineup, this backcourt's going to look totally different, and I agree. I totally agree with Flaugé, man. Having a big guard come back, the GOAT of your entire program come back, offer that pro experience, she's going to elevate this backcourt, man, and their play for a big wing like Anissa Boro. This is going to be great development, working more so on those perimeter skills. Uh, for Flaugé, just taking her game to the next level, like she mentioned, man. I think she will have the ball in her hands a lot more, helping out Poa. Um, I think Gilbert is going to be sensational for this group. Probably the best scorer coming in, immediate offense. So looking at them, Miracle Shepherd, lockdown defender. You know what I'm saying? They got Jersey coming in, a uh, big six foot plus six three six four wing out there, man. Um, I, I think that Simone Augustus is just going to be sensational for this group. And it was a home run hire. We know they've missed on a lot of big recruits lately. Sarah Strong, Jelani Cambridge. 
like players that they have went after. Joyce Edwards in this class. They've missed out in the transfer portal on some big names as well. They've been striking out on the recruitment trail after bringing in the number one recruiting class last year and the number one portal class. Of course, we know Haley Van Lip bolted and quite worked out. Um, you know, Janae Kent got got up out of there. Uh, it was just, you know, the lease is up out of there as well. Like, they lost half their freshman class, but they've rebuilt, and I think they have a better roster possibly than last season, man. I know they have to replace Angel Reese as well. Will it be Del Rosario? They get uh, Smith back as well uh, from injury. And she was, you know, top four leading scorer on this group. Could be a potential double-double. So I'm excited to see what LSU does, man. But I think I agree with Flage. Augustus is just going to be a cheat code for this group. And watch out for them Bayou Bengals, y'all. So that's a wrap for us. Let me know how y'all feel in the comments about everything. I appreciate y'all tuning in, locking in, rocking with me through this whole process. Continue to subscribe, like, comment, do what y'all do. Until next time, hey, we out.